basically it's a farming in water so the term aquaculture refers to the cultivation of both marine and fresh water species and can range from land based to open ocean production so now related to this how and which advances and technologies are involved to uh, relate this topic we are going to discuss in this today's seminar and the objective of this seminar is to provide Am I audible, sir? Yes, madam, yes. Okay. So the objective of this seminar is to provide you with an opportunity to learn about advances in the aquaculture from various perspectives and sources. So to give a brief overview, the seminar program we have divided into two sessions or we can say two subtopics. So the first subtopic you can say is a low cost technology of fish culture. And the second one topic is exotic fishes that is bone or bell. And these presentations will cover different aspects of advances in aquaculture such as briefly mentioned the subtopics. So now for this information discussion, and it's a great honor and privilege to welcome our respected keynote person, Dr. Indranil Ghosh sir, and resource person, Dr. Vidi Sakri sir, and chair person, Dr. Principal Shudha Sirsat sir, and I welcome you all three members and I would like to request to give residential address to Dr. Honorable, Honorable Dr. Shudha Sirsat sir, who is the principal of Yashwantrao College, Ambajogai District, and also a Senate member of Dr. Baba Sahib Ambedkar Marathwada University. Uh, so I uh, request now our respected principal sir to give your valuable speech. Uh, good morning, everybody. Adorable deity of Maharashtra, Chhatrapati Shivaji Maharaj, Matma Phule and Savitribai Phule, who brought the Ganga to knowledge, father of reservation, Chhatrapati Rahu Maharaj, and architect of Indian constitutions, Dr. Baba Sahib Ambedkar. First, salutation to the holy memory of all of them. Today, I am very happy to inaugurate the national level seminar organized by Department of Zoology. I am grateful to Honorable MLA, Sri Prakash Dada Solanke, President Maratwara Section Prasalak Mandal, Honorable Secretary M.L. Sri Satish Bhav Chawad, Honorable CDC Member Dattatre Abha Party, Dr. Narendra Ji Kale, and other CDC members. The office bears of all organizations have given their best wishes for this webinar. Today, our guest of honor and keynote address of this seminar, Honorable Dr. Indranil Ghosh, Subject Mate Specialist Fishery Science, Jal Pauguri Kushi Vigyan Kendra, West Bengal University, West Bengal, resource person of this seminar, Dr. V.B. Sakre, Principal and Head, Department of Zoology, Yogeshwari College, Ambajogai, Bid, Maharashtra. In organizing this seminar, my friend, Dr. Ashok Lakhe, Professor and Head, Department of Zoology, Dharur College, Maharashtra, has also played an important role. 
माय कलीग वाइस प्रिंसिपल डॉक्टर रमेश शिंदे प्रोफेसर पी के जाधव ऑर्गनाइजिंग कमिटी कन्वीनियर मिस रुबिया शेख आईक्यूएसी कोऑर्डिनेटर डॉक्टर राजपंखे स्टेरिंग कमिटी कोऑर्डिनेटर डॉक्टर अहिल्या बरुरे माय टेक्निकल सपोर्टर मिस्टर अले एंड असेफ कोऑपरेटिव मेंबर्स ऑफ द टीम फॉर दिस वन डे ऑनलाइन नेशनल सेमिनार ऑन एडवांसेस इन एक्वाकल्चर डियर डेलीगेट्स all over india and students friends it gives the it gives me a pleasure to welcome you on this occasion dear friends our institutions marathwada shikshan prasarak mandal chatrapati sambhaji nagar is one of the reputed institution of maharashtra establishment on 1958 and devoted for rendering quality education to the ruler and urban society as tamsorma jyotir gamaya which means journey from darkness to light our college has awarded a plus grade with cgpa 3.45 in fourth cycle by national assessment and accreditation council bangalore aquaculture also known as aqua farming it is the farming of fish crustaceans Crest mollusks aquatic plants algae and other organisms aquaculture involves cultivating fresh water and salt water population under controlled conditions and can be contrasted with commercial fishing which is harvesting of wild fish mariculture refers to aquaculture practices in marine environments and underwater habitats global aquaculture has grown dramatically over the past 15 years and the trend is continually suppressing other animal production industry making it the fastest growing food production sector in the world with huge seafood demands for steadily growing population in 2050 the advancement of aquaculture production method is vital modern farming practices and wild technology are constantly being applied in the aquaculture sector to address various production limitations such as supply of genuinized from hatcheries nutritional quality aquaculture is fastest growing food production sector in the world the demand for seafood is increasing at an atonizing rate in this background today's seminar will be important i think today's seminar will be fruitful to all researcher participants i hope that knowledge received from eminent and experts in the aspect during this events will be definitely useful for updating of faculties researcher and to enhance the knowledge of the students i welcome and thanks to all delegates who joined in this events once again thank you jai hind jai bharat thank you so much sir for gracing this occasion of national seminar with your presence and it's a great honor for our college to organize such a helpful and very informative program with such wonderful guests dr indranil ghosh sir and dr vb sakhre sir and we are privileged to have you both sir so now i would like to introduce our respected keynote speaker dr indranil ghosh sir who is presently designated as subject math specialist in fishery science at jalpaiguri krishi vigyan kendra and he is the directorate of research extension and farms 
in West Bengal University of Animal Sciences, Ramsai Dist, Dalpaguri, West Bengal. So he is having 22 years of working experience and his specialization is uh, ornamental fish culture, aquaculture, marine fishery, biological oceanography, and he is especially trained in fish disease diagnosis and control. So there are 35 articles published in national and international journals by him. So he had also organized national seminar and workshop in ornamental fish fair at Science City at JT Convener. So he had participated in number of national and international seminars. So now I would like to call Dr. Indermil Ghosh sir to discuss and give us valuable information by discussing on the topics. Thank you very much, uh, madam. Am I audible? Uh, yes, sir, you are. Good. Okay. And uh, very good afternoon to everyone. Especially, I am thankful to Honorable Principal, sir, and the Honorable Member of the Senate, Dr. V.B. Balashayev Shakare, who is a very old friend of mine, and other dignitaries and participants present here in this webinar. And also, I'd like to convey my uh, deep gratitude to Chhatrapati uh, because I'm very much uh, familiar about the Maratha history and I'm also fond of that. Uh, <laughs> I like it very much. And uh, without his uh, whose, uh, active uh, uh, participation in the freedom movement of India, the, I think that uh, the history of India would have been, uh, would have been uh, somewhat different without the intervention of Chhatrapati Shivaji Maharajji. So great salute to him, great Mara Namaskar to him and his family also. So, and uh, uh, today we have, uh, um, uh, we are going to discuss about the aquaculture, some technologies. Actually, I have chosen a topic which is called the low cost technology uh, for the fish culture. Actually, this has been invented by me uh, particularly uh, when I was working in the Terai region and all of us uh, must know that, uh, should know that uh, India has been uh, divided uh, into 13 agroclimatic zones and West Bengal is such a state which is having six agroclimatic zones. So aquaculture technologies are very, very area specific and agroclimate specific, at least what I have felt in my uh, research and teaching life. So we always try to uh, innovate or intervene some uh, new technology which will be suitable for the area, for particular area and the towards the targeted farmers. And as per my knowledge goes, your Marathawada district is very much, uh, there is a scarcity of water a lot. So uh, if uh, my intention is to present this uh, lecture whether it would be suitable for the farmers or the low, uh, uh, adopting this low cost technology and where the water is, the use of water is very, very less. So just I'm going to present and just I'm going to share my screen. Let me have the opportunity. <clears throat> is it clear to all? My screen is uh, clear to all. Yes, sir. Screen is clear. You can start. Okay. 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 So the topic uh, will be the introduction of tarpaulin polythene sheet in rural aquaculture, recent trade for poverty alleviation and doubling farmers income. Well, we have got mandate from the Indian Council of Agricultural Research that we have to double our farm, uh, farmers income. What uh, our Honorable Prime Minister of India uh, had advised to us, that was a, a, there was a program, Sankal Se Siddhi, uh, which we took uh, the oath in the year of 2018. And the slogan of which was the Sun Dohazar Bais Kahe Sapna Kisan Kya Aiho Dugna. 
ये डबलिंग फार्मर्स इनकम के लिए हमारे ये जो टेक्नोलॉजी या तकनीक इस्तेमाल इसको फॉर चैनलाइज किया जाए सो वी वे ट्राइंग टू डू फ्रॉम ऑल द डिसिप्लिन ऑफ आवर यूनिवर्सिटी पर्टिकुलरली आवर यूनिवर्सिटी वेस्ट बंगाल यूनिवर्सिटी ऑफ एनिमल एंड फिशरी साइंस एंड डायरेक्टरेट ऑफ रिसर्च एक्सटेंशन फॉर्म्स आई हैव गॉट पोस्टेड एज अ साइंटिस्ट Here in two thousand seventeen, and since then I was trying. Uh, before that, I was posted as a, a professor, associate professor, at the university. Uh, so since then, we were trying to uh, intervene something uh, that uh, will be particularly suitable for the small and marginal farmers with a very uh, uh, low cost technology. So in our aquaculture, that is a point. That is a climate, uh, a, a burning topic, burning problem. Is this climate smart aquaculture or climate smart farming? For that, uh, climate smart aquaculture practice, uh, um, it is going probably going to play the key role in the future sustainable fishery industry. Yes, it is uh, very much true. At least I think so. And uh, what we have tried to uh, pick up some species. which could be uh, recognized as the climate smart species because there is a tremendous increase a tremendous problem going on regarding the climate change global climate change and what i am presently residing at my uh, office uh, quarter uh, institute quarter is a terai region and it is just below the foothills of the darjeeling and uh, though uh, in this uh, Winter season, the temperature here is eight degrees centigrade, eight degrees Celsius. But in summer months, uh, it uh, uh, went uh, past two years data record. Uh, what uh, I can remember, it was thirty six, thirty seven degrees Celsius, which is very, very uncommon in particularly for this region. And due to these sort of uh, temperature differences, there is a huge and tremendous impact upon the aquaculture production. so we uh, channelized ourselves we motivated ourselves to uh, intervene some technology and some species to choose some species which are climate smart and which can withstand the uh, environmental uh, condition fluctuations so that's why we uh, cho choose the species which is called the vietnam koi and vietnam koi is nothing but the a uh, hybrid variety in breed it is actually outcome of the inbreeding uh, between the same species that is uh, anabas testudinius and there are three types of koi fishes uh, found in india one is our indigenous koi another one is thai koi which is uh, uh, invented by the thai uh, scientist and another one is uh, vietnam koi that is uh, by the vietnam scientists vietnamese scientists and uh, this vietnam koi this technology actually i can tell you that it has been widely spread in novel covid-19 lockdown period particularly it was suitable for the uh, migrant farmer migrant laborers which has had lost their jobs and the people also which has lost their livelihood security and they have adopted this technique and still now they are doing this practice and uh, they can they are earning uh, a good amount of money uh, by adopting this sort of uh, technology culture and now first of all what i have to do we have to do just just uh, just see that the, the photographs all the photographs i have taken i have incorporated here all these are taken from the field okay what we have done in our Terai region and all over West Bengal. Not only in West Bengal, this technology has been already transferred to Jharkhand, Rachi, Andaman Nicobar, Sikkim, and also some parts of other states of India. So we have at first we have to dig a pit. That is, we have to make an artificial pond. So artificial pond, the dimension pond dimension will be fourteen feet into seven feet into four feet. That means fourteen feet long. uh seven feet it's breadth and uh, four feet it will be the depth or height what you can say and you can see that uh, the farmers what i have instructed them just they have written on a piece of paper and a piece of par cardboard and they are displaying their activities very clearly here uh this is a farmer which is who is uh, standing over his uh, the shed this shed can be uh, made easily Uh, with the help of the split bamboo screen 
and we can cover it with a normal plastic paper just to prevent the scorching sunlight and the rainfall uh, to be uh, uh, to uh, uh, fall into the water and this is a pit the artwork was going on here is a picture artwork is, is going on uh, it is a very uh, easy method to dig a pit in the uh, ground in the ground and you can see that uh, this artificial pond may be surrounded by a lot of uh, trees the trees which i can refer uh, that may be the ereka nut that means supari ereka nut in our bengali we call it supari i don't know what is uh, it's a maratha uh, translated uh, term anyway ereka nut is a very very common uh, english term for us the ereka nut we can uh, we can we can cover this uh, uh, this pond with the biological covering biological fencing with the help of the ereka nut and ereka nut after three years or four years it will uh, uh, give a good uh, outcome uh, by uh, with its uh, fruits uh, which is a very uh, having a very good market in our uh, state so after that uh, this is a tarpaulin polythene sheet tarpaulin polythene sheet is uh, very much different with the normal polythene sheet because it has 250 to 300 gsm it is uh, almost it will be almost okay if you use the 200 to 20 gsm also it is also available in the market and the dimension of this uh, tarpaulin polythene sheet which will cover the 14 feet into 7 feet into 4 feet dig dark pond dark pit will be that 24 feet into seven, uh, 17 feet that means 24 by 17 square feet Uh, uh, pit. Uh, the farmer is going to uh, disinfect this tarpaulin with the help of potassium permanganate or we can use 0.2% of BKC. BKC means benzyl codium chloride and benzyl codium chloride well I, we will be using uh, the benzyl codium chloride we should be very very cautious because benzyl codium chloride is highly toxic to uh, the fishes also but it will never affect the tarpaulin sheet and tarpaulin sheet there is a uh, there are so many advantages of tarpaulin sheet uh, to be used as a pond liner because tarpaulin is uh, completely safe for the fish completely safe for the water that means it will never pollute the water and never harm the fish in any way after the um, potassium permanganate treatment uh, the thorough washing with the fresh water is very much needed as the normal protocol it says so and after that we can just uh, dry it with, in the sunlight uh they say uh, you see that uh, farmers are uh, doing the doing their jobs uh, upon the polythene uh, tarpaulin sheets and after that proper spreading of these tar the tarpaulin sheets into the uh, pit is necessary here is a picture you can see and here comes the next point now we are going to culture the fish in an artificial pond so artificial pond if we, we uh, whenever we are going to prepare an artificial pond we have to make the bottom soil so how can we make the bottom soil or what the components we will we should use <clears throat> from my two years continuous research experience i have what i have found that the coarse grain sand and the vermicompost vermicompost probably you all know what the vermicompost is vermicompost is very very powerful and it has a potentiality of 2.5 times greater than the cow dung to, as an organic fertilizer from our krishi vigyan kendra and from our university from our end we never uh, advise a farmer to use any sort of inorganic fertilizer except the nano urea prepared and launched by ifco a government of india undertaking you all know about the ifco i think so there is no need to mention the ifco's uh, full name and introduction so but uh, what we can found we have found that the use of vermicompost can provide almost all the things and also this research research, research work already um, uh, uh, supported by the Haryana Agriculture University Hisar, the scientist uh, uh, and the professors over there. So we can use a vermicompost very easily in the fish pond, uh, natural fish pond also uh, during the pond preparation. Uh, 
and in case of the artificial pond, what uh, we are using here. So coarse, why I have used the coarse grain sand? Because uh, the uh, coarse grain sand, there is an inter-particular space, inter-particle space, which can uh, hold some air within it. And uh, with the help of this sort of uh, technique, we can uh, introduce both the aerobic and anaerobic bacteria, especially needed for the recycling of the water and by maintaining the proper maintenance of the biogeochemical cycle within this artificial environment. And uh, uh, it, uh, it should be mixed in one is to one. You can see in the picture that farmers are just uh, manually just mixing it the coarse grain sand with the barmy compost one is to one actually the doses needed here is five kg of coarse grain sand and five kg of barmy compost you can mix it well in a polythene sheet uh, and you can pour it uh, into the artificial pit just like this and the water depth which uh, the previous slide in the in my previous slide what i have shown you that the uh, uh, initial water depth will be one feet only and we have to keep it for 21 days for complete decomposition which will ultimately lead to the production of the natural fish food organism within this artificial pond. Now after the uh, proper spreading uh, the artificial pond will look like this the bottom soil will look like this you need not to press it with a dumper or you need not to press it with your leg just pour it uh, as it is and it will be settled down in course of time within 21 days and after that uh, here is the species of the uh, uh, the small juveniles of the anabas testudinius and we can uh, we can uh, stock uh, this uh, exotic koi fish at the rate of 1250 numbers that means in 3.5 feet of water depth we can uh, stock 1250 1250 numbers of vietnam koi of this sort of size this uh, kind of size you can see the color this is a greenish bluish green color and this is a pure breed of vietnam koi and vietnam advantage of vietnam koi is uh, that that there is no can there is no interspecific cannibalism in case of these fishes. So it is very, very advantageous to culture these fishes. And also, I will discuss it, I will show you later, that uh, what are the uh, nutritional advantages, nutritional uh, qualities of this fish. After that, um, uh, see the my farmer, one of my farmer, just I have taken the photograph, he loves his fish so, so much, just so with the help of a spoon, he is feeding the, uh, his fishes with the artificial food. And we have to feed them at the rate of 3 to 5% of, the, of their body weight, uh, twice, two to three times daily. And uh, we need only one third uh, water exchange or one feet water exchange from the bottom, uh, sorry, from the top of the pond once or twice a week and as and when necessary with the help of a small pump or the help of a bucket so it will not uh, do any problem so uh, you can see the fishes are coming and uh, taking the uh, food from this uh, from his spoon it looks very beautiful whenever i see that my farmer is doing something by loving his fish uh, like his children also uh, so this is the uh, videography that I have put it in the slide, in my slide. Or you can put the feed uh, just uh, just to um, just to have, uh, have up the water and fish will come and uh, take it off. And this is the after three months. This is a culture period. Total culture period is a three months. After three months, you will get at least hundred gram of fish. Individual fish weight will be hundred gram. 
So this is a healthy Vietnam koi. You can see in the slide. And you can see that how healthy fish a farmer is holding with his hand. It's just a palm size of a adult human being. It's a very healthy fish. And uh, beneath that, a, a heap of uh, produce fish that has been caught from the pond has been shown here. Uh, in this field, in this pond, we can also culture other fishes also, like tilapia, like pabda, ompak bimaculatus. We can culture our Cladius batracus, Heteropneustis fossilis, and also one fish that which is which is under trial in my guidance and supervision in my project is Japanese putti, Putius japonicus. So this is a hips of fish, hips of tilapia, what have been cultured, had been cultured in this uh, environment, artificial environment also. This is a video. And what is water quality management? Uh, I, what I have told you that uh, one third of the surface uh, water twice a week or SOS, or that means as and when necessary. Uh, we can use we can use the quick uh, sorry slacked lime to uh, correct the pH and as you know that uh, pH is required to seven point five to eight point five it is known to all and other as per standard operational procedure and you can use a palm set also to manage your water. This is a growth curve of anabas what we have observed. Uh, it is particularly, it uh, grows, uh, the maximum growth it takes uh, at the uh, starting of the th third month. And after the three months, the culture will be uh, ready for harvest. And this is the advantages of using the tarpaulin polythene fish, what we have, I have told you earlier. It is very flexible uh, for handling and easy available in the market. It is waterproof and adjustable. Harvesting is also easy. And uh, water cannot be polluted with this uh, sort of uh, polythene sheet. And it's, it is also portable. That means it can be uh, shifted from one place to another. Here is the economics, a brief economics. You see the what are the costs uh, involved in this uh, uh, project, in this uh, culture project, culture tenure. It is a three months culture tenure. And the total uh, of rupees, 10th Indian rupee, national rupee, uh, 10,650. You can uh, round about it uh, uh, as 11,000, up to 11,000. And nothing is nothing more will be required for this project, for this technique. Uh, and just uh, see the final economics. Mm, this is a capital expenditure and the total earning and the profit which tells that the net profit per month is near about 10,000 per month. Well, it, it may vary from area uh, areas to the agroclimatic zone to one from uh, one to another, but uh, we can round it up at least about eight to 9,000 per month from this very small area that is seven, uh, 14 feet into seven feet into four feet. That means if you uh, consider is at a two-dimensional uh, structure, that means 14 feet into 7 feet, that means it comes to 7 into 4 is equal to 98 square feet. 98 square feet, we can uh, say it is a hundred, uh, almost 100 square feet. And from 100 square feet, if you can get eight, at least 8,000 rupees per month, that means per square feet, it may give you 80 rupees per month. So now you can say you can just imagine uh, what other else than other than the fisheries uh, or aquaculture project, uh, what other project can give you so uh, nice return, uh, particularly for the it will be beneficial for the poorer section of our uh, farming society. And uh, uh, one another thing I can uh, uh, I, I will I would like to uh, enlighten that is the addition of probiotics. If I add the probiotics into the soil, the culture will be, uh, the cal total culture period will be minimized to two to two and a half months. So uh, accordingly, you can calculate the economics, isn't it? So it's a very uh, uh, common phenomenon 
which is uh, getting very very uh, uh, what can I say? It is very very popular. It, it is going to be very very popular for the use of as a, like the use of probiotics in the aquaculture industry uh, because probiotics are containing so many uh, denitrifying and other bacteria and bacillus species and aeromonas species. Uh, bacillus megatherium and bacillus subtilis are the two prominent species which we can use as a in in our probiotics. And what are the pragmatic features of this technology? Just I can uh, highlight it. It is a very simple technology and it is farmers friendly, ecologically non-hazardous, and economically very strong and cost effective, and optimum economic return from unitary. What what I can uh, I have told you just now that uh, from one square feet we can get at least eighty rupees per month, and the farmers are earning like this. And uh, it is also eco-friendly, and it will not the, uh, not polluted uh, pollute the water as well as the fish. And the fish has uh, fish uh, live here and uh, produced here is a very very healthy fish. And uh, just we, I have mentioned you earlier that this is, has been proved a very best management practice, and it has been already published in the ICR website, Indian Council of Agricultural Research website as a best management practice in fisheries, one of the best management practices in fisheries during the COVID-19 lockdown period, and also uh, it is going on. And it is uh, also it is a very short duration culture so that the farmer can uh, uh, have the maximum benefit. So what is the message from our institute, our university, that uh, uh, we recommend we can recommend this sort of technology after a long term of research work and continuous field trial in our environment and also environments of North Bengal, South Bengal, East Bengal, West Bengal, and uh, so many, uh, some other parts in India, in uh, other states also, that the farmers, the, uh, this they can use, uh, the, particularly the small and marginal farmers they use if they adopt this technology, uh, they can earn a lot. And what uh, my uh, message for the uh, farmers of Maratovara district, and why, when I visited, I saw that uh, they can uh, bring the water, drinking water far from their uh, residence. Uh, I think that this sort of technology will be very, very good for the uh, uh, farmers of your Maratovara district and other parts of Maharashtra. Uh, this is uh, a very, very low cost technology and which you can uh, easily adopt. So I will not uh, enlarge my uh, lecture anymore. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir, for such informative presentation and we have taken to the fish hatchery worms by our college and in 2014 so i remember uh, at that time we have seen the fish hatchery in Majalgao. so uh, i was uh, very thankful to the, dr vd sakri sir because uh, sir was our professor at that time and uh, dr vd sakri sir and dr suryanshi sir have taken us to that wonderful excursion tour and there I have watched out such kind of information. And after that, I am experiencing uh, such kind of information by your wonderful presentation. So thank you so much, sir, for your uh, informative speech. And thank you very much. I would like to... Thank you. And now I would like to invite and welcome our respected resource person, Dr. V.B. Sakre, sir, who is the in-charge principal of Yogeshwari Mahavidyalaya. Ambajogai this beer and uh, having present position uh, as a professor in zoology department, Yogeshwari Mahavidyalaya Ambajogai this beer, Maharashtra, and he is a recognized postgraduate teacher in uh, zoology department of uh, Dr. Bamu uh, Aurangabad and uh, recognized research guide in zoology in Solapur University and as well as uh, in the Dr. Baba Sahib Ambedkar Marathwada University Aurangabad. So now he is a member of uh, six examiners panel for PhD thesis. Uh, he has been awarded four PhD and two research students working for PhD under his guidance. And he has 24 years of research experience. He has published uh, 39 books, 
uh, and he is uh, he has attended the 72 uh, seminars and workshops so now i would also request to dr vd sakre sir who has kindly agreed to share his experience and knowledge on topic exotic species boon or ban and we are eagerly looking forward to hearing from them am i audible Please. madam yes sir you are audible okay so first of all i am thankful to uh, principal of uh, ishwantrao chavan college dr sirsat sir and uh, organizing team of this college so let me start for my presentation which is based on uh, exotic fishes and their performance in uh, india in a post independence period particularly so many species were uh, imported in our country and this presentation it uh, deals with impact of these exotic species uh, on our native fish fauna so exotic animals are defined as species occurring outside uh, of its natural range and they are mainly introduced in our country for uh, aquaculture purpose major concerns were the introduction of these species are uh, prolific breeding predation or competition of the introduced species affecting our indigenous biodiversity this may lead to potential dominance of introduced species disease transmission and contamination of local genetic pools it has been observed that out of 160 species of freshwater fishes introduced in 120 different countries hardly 10% were found satisfactory so let me come to international status of exotic species in russia a number of fishes which were accidentally introduced for aquaculture purpose with uh, tenopherangdon idila which is commonly known as grass carp that resulted in decline in the local species with same feeding regime another example it is of poisilla reticulati induced the decline in number of local cyprinodonts in uganda another example it is from united states of america where aggressive behavior from introduced the brown trout has altered the distribution pattern of indigenous uh, salmons another example it is of it is from australia where the hybridization between two or possibly more imported varieties of cyprinus scorpio has given rise to vigorous and aggressive bolara strain which spread explosively in 1960s 70s becoming far more widespread and problematic so impacts of introduction do not only concern biological and ecological parameters but might also directly or indirectly affect the socio economic factors so here exotic fish introduction in our country uh, it was uh, carried out since 19th century the transplantation of this species in indian water is not a good experience and uh, this presentation it is a collective information on the exotic fishes and their impact on indian fish fauna consequently the national committee on introduction of exotic fishes in indian water it was established in 1984 under the chairmanship of ws larka who was chairman of central institute of fisheries education mumbai uh let me come to game fishes different species under this category they were imported so they include brown trout salmo tuta ferio then salmo gardineri gardineri which is commonly known as rainbow trout then salvelinus pontinellis which is eastern brook trout then loach uh, lemon trout atlantic salmon and soki salmon so several food fishes were also imported in our country those are common carp which was imported in 1957 then tilapia oreochromis mozambicus it was it is from africa it was imported in 1952 another fish is grass carp tinopherangdon idila which was uh, uh, imported in our country in 1957 on similar line silver carp tench gourmi and twiz they were imported in country in 1959 1970 1916 and 1972 respectively 
Uh, besides these uh, game fishes and food fishes, several larvivorous fishes were also imported in our country, which comprises guppies. Scientific name is Poesilla reticulata, which was imported from South America in 1908. Another species is Gambusia finis, which is commonly known as top minnow, which was imported from Italy. Uh, beside uh, these larvicidal fishes, several uh, aquarium fishes or ornamental fishes were also imported in India. So more than 27 species of live bearers were imported and more than 261 species of egg layers were also imported for uh, aquarium uh, purpose or uh, for ornamental fish industry. So uh, uh, there are some unauthorized introductions also. Uh, which includes uh, big head carp, Arthictis nobilis, then uh, uh, African catfish, Clarius garipinus, uh, Nile tilapia, Oreochromis niloticus, Red tilapia, Oreochromis species, and uh, Pyractus uh, branchiopus, which is known as Paku. So these are some unauthorized unauth introductions in our country. The exact uh, reason uh, or uh, behind this uh, uh, stocking, it is not known. Uh, in India, unfortunately, uh, the data uh, is uh, lacking as far as the uh, introduction of exotic fishes is concerned. The most information is scanty, scattered, and based on field observations and reports, which were uh, prepared from uh, different uh, central government agencies like uh, Central Institute of Fisheries Education, the National Bureau of Fish Genetic Resources, uh, then Central Institute of Fisheries uh, and aquaculture and Central Inland Fisheries Research Institute. The potential impact of different exotic fish species introduced in India has been synthesized and described in present uh, presentation. So let me come to first fish, uh, tilapia. Uh, scientific name is Oreochromis mozambicus. Uh, this fish is native of Africa and Middle East, and uh, they have spread mainly through introductions for fish farming and uh, now found in all tropical and semi-tropical uh, countries. It is surprising that this fish is farmed in more than 90 countries. It is cultured in freshwater ponds and reservoirs of Java, Malaysia, Thailand, India, Pakistan, Vietnam, South Africa, Uganda, and other different countries. Some tilapia species can adapt full strength of seawater also. And uh, this fish globally, this fish is glorified as aquatic chicken. Uh, due to its availability to grow quickly with poor quality inputs. In India, it was uh, imported in 1952 by Central Marine Fisheries Research Institute and second by the Madras Fishery Department in the same year from uh, Ceylon. So this fish, uh, it never grow more than 100 grams. And uh, due to all these uh, is, uh, properties, this fish is referred as weed fish. There are several examples from uh, uh, reverse reservoirs and lakes where this fish has badly affected our indigenous biodiversity. First example, it is of Pawai Lake of Mumbai, where major carps have been badly hit with the accidental introduction of tilapia, with the production sliding down from 33 kg per hectare to uh, 12 kg per he hectare. Another example, it is of Jaisman Lake of Udaipur, Rajasthan. Uh, which is a research example where the calf fishery has totally collapsed after the entry of tilapia. In Amravati, as well as from Krishna Sagar reservoirs uh, of Tamil Nadu, the tilapia, it, uh, it is reported and it has badly affected uh, our Indian major calves. In Waigai River uh, reservoir from same state, uh, tilapia, it forms a major fishery. In uh, upper reservoir, tilapia's contribution, it is it was 58% and uh, major calves, uh, they declined uh, by 33% in 1989. Uh, Srinivasan found that the growth of growth rates of Patla Labio, Fimbratus and Chirinus Migala were badly affected by tilapia in Ayakulam pond. He also reported the growth of Chanos Chanos, which is commonly known as uh, milkfish. its growth was badly affected from water bodies of Tamil Nadu. From aquaculture systems, tilapia has displaced our gangetic carps also. And a survey on fish diversity in brackish water lake, Valley in Kerala, 
reveal that the tremendous disappearance of Chela labuca, Acronis skeletus, and other species is due to the various ecological reasons and the invasion of uh, this fish. So it has, uh, it is also found from in backwaters of Kerala, and it has displaced uh, the local species like Eutropolis suratensis. It is also reported from Perrier Lake of Kerala, and it forms uh, more than 25% of the total catch, and it has adversely affected Eutropolis suratensis, uh, suratensis, which is known as a queen of Kerala. So tilapia is now also reported from Ganga, Yamuna, Godavari, as well as uh, different river systems of uh, our country. In Godavari River also, in our region, particularly in Maratwada region, this fish, it forms 20% of the total fish catch from this river. There is a tremendous pressure from the private sector to introduce new strains and varieties of tilapia in India. So uh, not only this uh, tilapia mozambica, but other uh, species like til tilapia nilotikus, they were also introduced uh, in our country for uh, aquaculture or for fish farming uh, purpose. However, past experience of 55 years on performance of tilapia in Indian waters warrants a serious national debate and a foolproof mechanism to safeguard the indigenous fish fauna for any further introduction of tilapia species. There are several examples in uh, Pampa Reservoir. Uh, the percentage uh, of fish yield obtained from tilapia population was uh, highest. On similar line, Chiliar, Minkara, Pichi, and Malampuza reservoirs of Kerala, they were stocked with tilapia in early 60s, and presently uh, they form uh, a, a substantial catch. In Malampoza reservoir of tilapia, uh, uh, tilap uh, tilapia it forms 70% of the total catch. Let me come to a few examples from our uh, Maratwada region. In Borna reservoir near Pali, tilapia has totally eliminated uh, cutla species. And here in this Borna reservoir, tilapia contribute to about 45% of the total fish catch. And it has been observed that it never grow more than uh, 250 grams. Here, uh, uh, one of my students, he has completed his uh, PhD on this Borna Reservoir. And uh, here, uh, our local consumers, they usually prefer Indian major crafts and cat catfishes. They never prefer uh, tilapia due to its uh, uh, small size. As I told that, it uh, never grow more than 250 grams. So in Borna, not only in Borna, but in several reservoirs and uh, rivers and their tributaries, tilapia is very common nowadays. So this is a whole of tilapia. Uh, this photograph, it is from Borna Reservoir, which is very close to Parari. As I told that one of my students, uh, he has completed his PhD work on impact of this tilapia on uh, Indian major caps. So uh, one news was there, uh, which was uh, published in Down to Earth. Uh, which is a periodical published by uh, Center for Science and Environment, which is a Delhi-based non-government organization. So the title of that news, it was Tilapia Fish May Have Killed Gharials in Chambal Waters. So Tilapia fish could have caused the death of gharials along the Uttar Pradesh, Madhya Pradesh border. Gharials could have consumed the fish abundantly found in the Yamuna, which is polluted with heavy metals. A toxin in the fish could have entered in Gariel's body and damaged their kidney, resulting in gout-like symptoms and then death takes place. So this report, it was published in Down to Earth uh, of uh, February in February 2008. So these uh, tilapias, which uh, were common in Yamuna water, and that Yamuna, it is a highly polluted river. And uh, by consuming these fishes, tilapia species, from Yamuna water, uh, death of more than 100 gharials uh, takes place due to uh, this uh, uh, failure of kidney or gout-like symptoms. Tilapia, no doubt it is a hardy fish and it can withstand high pollution and toxins such as heavy metal tend to get accumulated in its body. And tilapia could, uh, could have brought toxins from Yamuna where it is dominant. The tilapia link has surprised the gharial experts who say gharials usually spear the invasive tilapia. They feed on the local fish. But villagers in the region say illegal fishing has led to sharp decline in the local fish, forcing the gharials to target tilapia, locally known as 
kawai so this fish tilapia it is locally known as kawai and uh, due to heavy pollution uh, load in yamuna other uh, delicate species they disappeared from yamuna water and as this tilapia is a hardy fish only that consuming that tilapia species only uh, death of uh, uh, these gharials takes place uh, conservation said tilapia could have harm human health and aquatic life people in chambal have been eating it since few local varieties are available many now fear that tilapia which is a predatory fish may threaten fish in nearby rivers too so another news in marathi it was appeared in delhi lok satta and abhijit gorpade he is associate editor of this uh, uh, newspaper and uh, he wrote a article on ghost dukkar mashashi actually uh, he called this uh, tilapia as a dukkar masa because it lives in dirty water marine water brackish water fresh fresh water it is a very hardy fish even it can able to survive uh, at uh, Uh, 0 degree centigrade also so this uh, article it deals with uh, uh, adverse effect of tilapia in uh, reservoirs uh, lakes and uh, rivers of uh, uh, maharashtra another uh, article uh, it is based on uznila pradushana ta vilkha this uh, tilapia it is also a dominant fish in uh, uzni which is a large reservoir uh, in maharashtra so uh, this uh, my interview it was uh, published in daily saka and that interview uh, it also deals with uh, uh, impact of tilapia fish and its uh, uh, adverse impact on local species so here uh, as i told that uh, not only rivers and lakes but this fish is very common in rivers also uh, different rivers and their tributaries Uh, they are dominated by this uh, tilapia so another article my article it was published in agrovan which is a popular marathi newspaper and this article it also uh, uh, deals with uh, adverse impact of tilapia on our indigenous uh, uh, fish uh, biodiversity uh, another report it is from uh, vidarbha region that uh, this article it deals with uh, my, Uh, impact of this uh, tilapia and other exotic species and their adverse uh, uh, effect on uh, uh, several local species from vidarbha region let me come to uh, silver carp hypothalamus molitrix uh, in marathi it is known as uh, uh, chenderi masa uh, naturally it occurs uh, in rivers by south and central china and it is one of the chinese major carp which was introduced in india in 1959 for aquaculture purpose this fish is a surface feeder its prey mainly feeds on zooplankton whereas the fingerlings and adults they mainly feeds on phytoplankton it is an important fish species of aquaculture and is is widely used in polyculture or composite fish farming according to karan chandani and mishra silver carp and katla they share a common niche and uh, compete with each other for food in reservoir ecosystem and the same authors they concluded that the silver carp hampered the growth of katla in the reservoirs and advocated question before its stocking in indian reservoirs so this uh, uh, silver carp usually it makes competition with uh, katla because it is also a surface feeder and it makes competition for space and food with uh, katla katla accidental entry of this fish formed a breeding population in goin sagar reservoir of himachal pradesh and gulari reservoir in madhya pradesh these reservoirs were known known for the dominance of katla fishery whereas the invasion of silver carp altered the habitat rendering it unsuitable for sustaining katla so uh, here uh, this report it uh, uh, it deals with uh, adverse impact of silver carp uh, on uh, katla katla so Uh, katla katla fishery it, uh, it is badly affected uh, by stocking this uh, fish in goin sagar reservoir of himachal pradesh another uh, example it is from himachal pradesh uh, here the katla katla and the tar putitara uh, their fishery is also badly affected due to the entry of silver carp the main fishery now consists of silver carp which fetches low price with low keeping quality and low demand its feeding intensity is very high compared to uh, katla fish 
Well, percentage composition of composition of phytoplankton in the gut of cutlea and silver carp was more or less same. That's why, as I told that, it makes competition for uh, food with uh, cutlea species. Zooplankton, the favorite diet of cutlea, formed 21% of the gut content of silver carp. Third uh, exotic candidate is common carp. Scientific name is uh, Cyprinus carpio. In Marathi, it is known as Cyprinus. So uh, it was introduced in India in 1939, and there are three different varieties of this fish. First one is scale carp. Uh, the entire body of this fish is covered with uh, small cycloid scales. Second variety is mirror carp. The uh, scales, they are shiny like that of mirror, and they are irregularly arranged all over the body. And third variety, it is a leather carp, Airbus body it, uh, is devoid of skills. So this fish, Cyprinus carpio, is a bottom feeder, omnivorous, and uh, feeds on vegetable debris, insects, worms, and crustaceans. The common carp is not suitable uh, fish for stocking in Indian reservoirs, especially in large reservoirs. Being a sluggish fish, its chances of survival in predator-dominated reservoirs are very poor. Due to its slow movement and bottom building habit, they are not frequently caught in passive fishing gears like gillnet. In our area, fishermen uh, particularly, they are of the opinion that this fish is a bottom dweller sluggish fish and it, it is not caught easily in the gillnets. Its feeding habit, uh, particularly browsing nature, will undermine uh, river or reservoir banks, leading to the collapse of banks and uprooting vegetation, bringing changes to the river flow and river courses. The fo foraging behavior of this fish resulted in vegetation removal, both by its uh, proliclivity to dig through substrate in search of food. The later activity also resulted in increased water turbidity, rendering the conditions more conducive for its propagation. It is no wonder, despite a regular stocking for 13 years, not a single common carp was ever caught from the Nagarjuna reservoir of Andhra Pradesh. So, uh, particularly from Andhra Pradesh or from Telangana, uh, these uh, reports are there that uh, this common carp is not suitable uh, in uh, reservoir fishery. And uh, there are several uh, reports regarding the adverse impact of this fish on Cyrinus migala, Cyrinus cirrhosa, and Cyrinus reba. These reports are from Krishna Raj Sagar Reservoir of Karnataka and Ginna Reservoir of Maharashtra. In Dal Lake also, uh, this common carp, it forms 70% of the total catch. And the introduction of this fish, uh, it has badly affected local Caesothorax species. So this fish is also reported from cold water regions. And as this slide, it focuses on the uh, Dal Lake fishery. So uh, 60 to 70% of the uh, the lake fishery it is supported by a single species, which is Cyprinus carpio or common carp, and it has badly affected local Caesothora species from the lake of Kashmir. Uh, let me come to Garni Reservoir, which is uh, in Latur district. Uh, the total water spread area of this reservoir is 949 hectares, and uh, this reservoir it is managed by one fisheries cooperative uh, society. And the seed of uh, exotic fishes like Cyprinus carpio and grass carp, it is regularly stocked in this reservoir. Altogether, 22 species, they forms a fishery. Uh, the fishery of reservoir is supported by alien sp species of Cyprinus formis, which includes two exotic fishes. Those are grass carp and uh, this uh, common carp, five species of Siluri formis, and two species from <laughs> Lupi formis, one species from Percy formis, one species each from Mastacimbelli formis and Mugili formis. Unfortunately, the Indian major crops have declined sharply from uh, year 2011 12 to 13 14, with the local fishes increasing dramatically in the reservoir. No earlier reports on the presence of grass carp, either in upstream or downstream of Garni reservoir, are available. The possibility of introduction in the reservoir appeared to be through stocking material brought from outside. Discussion with the local fishermen and random sample survey on fish catch revealed that Cyprinus carpio contribute to about 20% of the total fish catch from Garni Reservoir. So it is interesting that a single species, uh, which is Cyprinus carpio, it forms more than 20% uh, 
of the total catch of Garni Reservoir of Latur district. Another example, it is of Majalgao Reservoir, which is a part of Zayakwadi scheme. Uh, it was constructed across river Sindhapana, which is a tributary of river Godavari. Here, uh, uh, here, this data, it is based on a uh, uh, research project which was funded by University Grants Commission to me. And uh, during first year of investigation, more than 30% fishery, it was supported from uh, exotic species. In second year of investigation, that is in year 2012-13, more than 37% of uh, fishery, it was uh, supported by uh, imported or exotic species. And uh, in last year of investi investigation, that is in year 2013 and 14, more than 35% fishery of uh, this Majalgao reservoir, it was supported by exotic species. So uh, year by year, there is an increase in the catch of exotic species from Majalgao reservoir. So these exotic species, they comprise three species, Cyphenia scarpio, uh, common carp, then Tilapia mozambica, and uh, that's hypophthalmic this molytrix, uh, silver carp. So other examples are also there. Fish has now escaped into rivers and presently populating to entire stretch of Yamuna and Gomti. Introduction of common carp in India is reported to have caused a sharp decline to commercial catches of endemic uh, cesothorax species. It is also found in different river and systems like Godavari, Kaveri, Krishna, Tapi, and Mahanadi. It has not only a potential to hybridize with roe, but it can easily hybridize with other species of like Katla, Nigal. And it can easily breed with some, some ornamental fishes like uh, Coraceus, Coraceus, and Coraceus auratus also. So due to introduction of this fish in lakes of Kumain, the catches of Cesothorax species have gone down to 0 0.04 to 6.81%, while the common crop formed 14.35 to 41.93% of the catch. Segal uh, reported that the common crop catches from Gohinsaga Reservoir and Pong Reservoir of Himachal Pradesh are gaining predominance over the marshes. So here, uh, the entry of this fish, it has badly affected uh, marshes fish, Torpoditora and Sidothorax species also. The common carp is also responsible for the decline in snow trouts from cold water regions. Uh, in Manipur, uh, common carp displaced Osteobroma belangri from Loktok Lake in Manipur. Another candidate, the exotic uh, candidate, is big head carp. Uh, scientific name is Arthritis uh, nobilis. Uh, it is a Chinese carp and uh, it is found in more than 70 countries. And today, the big head carp can be found in the wild in Europe, South America, and North America also. It was illegally introduced in country to enhance aquaculture production. Uh, the exact year uh, of transport, uh, its, uh, uh, its uh, import is not known. It, you know, it was illegally introduced for aquaculture purpose. And uh, uh, it has adversely affected the growth population of katla uh, fish from different uh, rivers and uh, reservoirs of our country. A fish also competes for food with other fishes uh, present in that ecosystem. And since small size, big head carp are not very good in meat quality and have a lot of fine intermuscular bones. Farming raise big size. The big head carp often infected with bacterial and parasitic infections. This may cause negative impacts on health of our local species. Another fish is Thai magur. Actually, uh, Indian magur, that clarious bat record is different. In Marathi, it is known as Mandari Masa, or it is commonly known as Indian magur. But uh, this uh, clarious garipinus, it is commonly known as African magur or uh, Thai magur, as this fish is very common in Thailand and uh, Africa. It is a highly carnivorous fish. So in India, uh, this fish was introduced by private uh, fish farmers for aquaculture purpose. It has a fast growth rate. Initially, it was cultivated along the major calves where the farmers experienced heavy losses to the carp and hence they switched over to monoculture of this fish. Uh, initially, 
uh, this fish, it was cultured with Indian major caste, but as this is a carnivorous fish, so uh, yeah, it feeds on uh, young ones of uh, Indian major caste like cattle, roe, and eagle. So later on, uh, the fish farmers from Bengal, they started monoculture of this uh, species instead of uh, a polyculture practice. This fish, it accepts all types of cheap feed, including slaughterhouse waste. The environmental issues soon warranted its uh, culture. So recently, this fish, uh, it has been uh, banned by government of India in in uh, by uh, Department of uh, Animal Husbandry and Fisheries. So there are several uh, examples regarding negative uh, say performance of this fish uh, in our uh, country. Uh, it has entered not only in reservoirs, lakes, but uh, it is uh, now common fish found in Ganga, Yamuna, Satlaj, and Godavari water. In Bangladesh also, it has badly affected uh, local species. Another fish is Pangasius suchi. So it is cultured in Bengal and Andhra Pradesh. It has spread uh, into many natural waters of country and impacted the economic conditions of local fish farmers, substituting on the local fishery or on the crop producer from their own pond or tanks. Uh, like that of Clarius garipinus, this fish, it has been banned by government. So the Ministry of Agriculture, Department of Animal, Husbandry, Dairying and Fisheries had already sounded the state fishery departments for taking a precautionary approaches in the culture of this species. The fish is uh, uh, known to grow to about uh, one kg in three months period. No doubt, uh, growth is fast compared to Indian major calves. So it is a fast growing fish. But uh, the main point is that uh, it, uh, it badly affects our indigenous biodiversity. It is not suitable for culture with our local species or indigenous uh, fish species. So incidents of escape of this fish into wild habitats have also been recorded in several wetlands of Kerala, Uttar Pradesh, Bengal, and uh, Koleru Lake of Andhra Pradesh. It is also reported to carry certain uh, infectious diseases which can be transmitted to other local species occurring in wild stock. Another uh, fish is uh, uh, Peractus paku. It is known as uh, paku fish or in Marathi it is known as Rupchan masa. So uh, Hata, this fish is uh, entered in our fish market also. It was unofficially introduced possibly during year 2004 via Bangladesh. Since the boundaries of the countries are porous, Paku, piracy, and unauthorized introductions have been carried out. The fish has got, uh, got both food and ornamental value. The morphology information, characteristics, and biology of this fish in India are yet to be scientifically validated. So there are several articles uh, nowadays which are uh, written on this uh, performance of Paku in our country. Uh, so uh, performance of this fish in Indian waters particularly, it is not good. Uh, though this fish is very popular among the fish consumers. The unauthorized culture of breeding and uh, of Paku in India has been expanding during recent past, causing concern of local fish biodiversity management. As per reports available, a significant subset of alien species can become invasive and have serious adverse impact on biodiversity and related uh, ecosystems, services, as well as have other social and economic impacts also. Another fish is mos uh, mosquito fish, Gambusia affinis. So this fish, it was introduced in India and have had a negative impacts on aquatic biodiversity. This uh, fish is a prolific breeder. Actually, this fish, it was introduced in India for mosquito population control, but uh, it has been revealed that it can badly affect our small-sized Local species, particularly cyprinodont species, are badly affect, affected uh, due to this fish. Another fish is uh, guppy fish. Uh, guppy is also a popular fish for mosquito control. Scientific name of this fish is Poecilla reticulata. Uh, similarly, reports on IUCN indicate that the introduction of uh, guppy fish has caused a number of uh, extinctions in uh, World War. So not only in India, but this fish it has badly affected uh, several uh, indigenous uh, fishes uh, from India as well as from adjacent countries. 
So let me come to last slide, which focus on conclusion and recommendations. Exotic species have provided socio socioeconomic benefits for a vast number of poor people in the region. And there is no accurate information on their spread and negative ecological impacts as a few studies have been conducted to evaluate these impacts. As I told that only three or four agencies are working on the performance of exotic species in India, particularly National Bureau of Fish Genetic Resources, then Central Institute of Fisheries Education, Central Inland Fisheries Research Institute, and uh, that uh, SIBA, Central uh, uh, Institute of Brackish Water Aquaculture. The government should carefully weigh both positive and negative impacts for each species before making any national uh, or regional policy. There is an urgent need to develop a well-planned research program to assess uh, the impacts. After such evaluation, it is necessary to develop a code of conduct for the management of exotic species in our country. The code of conduct should address the issues of zoning, risk analysis, health certification, quarantine, development of inventory of species according to invasiveness and non invasiveness capacity building for monitoring and implementation of ports and regional information exchange. So recently, uh, central government, they have established the Aquaculture Authority of India. So we can import any foreign fish only with permission of this uh, Aquaculture Authority of India. So uh, the entry, illegal entry nowadays, it has been totally banned and we can import any aquatic uh, species with permission or with uh, prior permission of this Aquaculture Authority of India. Its, its headquarter is at uh, Chennai. For further readings, uh, uh, you can refer uh, one book, Fish Introductions in India, uh, which is published by Narendra Publishing House. Editors are W.S. Lakra, A.K. Singh, and yes, I have Actually, this is a proceeding of uh, one workshop, uh, which was uh, organized by Central Institute of Fisheries Education, Mumbai. Another book, it is uh, written by me. The title of book is Freshwater Exotic Fishes. Uh, it is published by Discovery Publishing House, uh, Delhi. Uh, this, uh, uh, this is second book. And third book, it is Exotic Aquatic Organisms in Asia. It is edited by SS De Silva. And uh, this book, it is a proceeding of the workshop on uh, introduction of exotic aquatic organisms in Asia. This is a uh, first publication of Asian Fishery Society, Manila, Philippines. Uh, lastly, I'm uh, thankful to University Grants Commission New Delhi for financial assistance provided uh, for my major research project on environmental impact of exotic fish introductions in reservoirs of Maratwada, Maharashtra. And uh, once again, I'm thankful to principal of Yashantara Chauhan College for uh, this opportunity. Uh, thank you. So thank you so much for this beautiful and uh, speech. And now, last but not the least, I would uh, like to call Ms. Nilofar Ma'am for the word of thanks. Good afternoon. I would like to thank you, all the participants, delegates, faculty members, staff volunteers, and everyone who has contributed to make this one-day national seminar a success. Your presence, your presence and interest are highly appreciated. Thank you. Thank you.